Hello everyone. Thank you all for coming for today's session on deploying Hyperledger Fabric with Kubernetes Operator Framework. So let's get started with a quick introduction of myself. My name is Manak Patni and I'm a blockchain and a full stack developer from India. I've been working on different blockchain applications for the past three years now and I have experience on working on multiple blockchain platforms like uh, Ethereum, Hyperledger Fabric, Algorand, etc. Uh, I was also one of the Hyperledger interns for the previous year's Hyperledger internship program and I contributed to the Hyperledger Cello project during that internship. Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter and Telegram so if you have any feedback or questions uh, for this session or anything else feel, feel free to reach out to me. So for those of you who are not familiar with the blockchain technology let me give you a quick introduction of what it is. So a blockchain is essentially a digital list of changes that has happened to an application state now this list of transaction is called a ledger and in order to create a new change one has to create a transaction and that will be appended to the ledger now for example a user wants to come in and change his profile so that would count as one of the transactions and will be appended to the ledger now anyone can go back in time and see what change was made and by whom and uh, this ledger is an important piece of a blockchain application and it is also distributed across a, a group of a group of uh, computer systems on a network and they all contain a copy of it uh, so that uh, the the application state or the list of changes that have been made to the application are all, all, always verifiable and auditable so this uh, this ledger is also completely immutable so if you want to change the state of your application you can create a new transaction but once you have done that transaction, it cannot be reverted back. So, so these nodes also decide the next transaction that will be added to the ledger. And uh, one, one single node cannot do that. Therefore, uh, all of the nodes should come upon this agreement of, of, the, of the new state of the ledger. So an, a, a node proposes a change to the, to, the, to the ledger, which is then distributed to all of the other nodes. And a consensus algorithm is then used to make sure that the transaction is correct. So these consensus algorithms are are, um, are of different types. For example, uh, proof of work, proof of stake, uh, delegated proof of stake, and they use some different logic to to find out the next transaction, the next valid transaction. A blockchain is actually a a sub part of distributed ledger technology. So a blockchain uses blocks. To form, uh, to form this digital ledger, and the blocks act as a security mechanism for maintaining the shared information or the state of the blockchain. So every block contains a list of a list of transactions as well as a link to the previous block. Uh, so that's why uh, there's a chain formation, uh, and uh, and that also increases the security of of the blockchain. Blockchains can also be classified on the basis of their accessibility and transparency. So a public blockchain is uh, completely transparent. Anyone can see the data, whereas a permission blockchain is partially transparent. So some members can be allowed to see the data, whereas some, some can be restricted. Uh, private uh, blockchains are usually used for development purposes only. Ethereum and Bitcoin are great examples of public blockchain where all of the data is completely available to the public. So you can go to the internet and go like go through a list of all the transactions that were ever made on these blockchains. Now users are also treated equally, which means all of them have the same privileges, uh, no matter who they are. Identity is also anonymous. So if you create two different accounts, uh, none of them can be traced back to you or to each other. So the underlying technology of such blockchains was great but they certainly could not be used for applications like supply chain, asset registry, banking, finance, etc. So enterprises were really fascinated and they loved the idea of having immutability, trustlessness, auditability in their applications. But uh, they also needed a, a, techno a, a, a blockchain where um, membership can be controlled and they can, they can know who the members were and the transactions can also be made secret. Now, Hyperledger Fabric came out of this need of, of the enterprises. So Hyperledger Fabric is a framework which is used to create permission blockchain networks. It is, it is a framework under the Hyperledger project and uh, it is maintained by the Linux Foundation. Now, contributors uh, of Hyperledger Fabric are throughout the globe. It is an open source project and 
you can you can find the documentation on hyperledgefabric.treatthedocs.io Hyperledger Fabric has a great list of features which makes it really popular among the developers so you can write the chain code in Go, Java and Node uh, the ledger also has SQL-like capabilities privacy is also a great feature of Hyperledger Fabric because you can create channels where only a certain members of the consortium can transact among themselves there are also membership services where uh, you can create identities or you can also revoke identities from users the consensus algorithms are also very flexible and scalable so they has great throughput uh, the whole architecture of fabric is completely modular so you can swap from different membership services you can swap the consensus algorithms too so uh, these these features makes it a really popular choice and uh, great for enterprises because because it has it also has great support from from the community so these are the components of fabric so there is ledger which contains a list of all the transactions there is chain code which is a software that is running on peer and it is responsible for changing the state of um, of, of the application or the blockchain now peers commit the transactions and they also keep a copy of the ledger uh, they are also the endpoints through which the application is interact with the blockchain network. And there are orders which uh, which decides the order of the transactions. So peers send transactions to orders. They bundle them and they decide the order and then they send it back to the peer to to commit. The channels are separate spaces for members and every channel has its separate ledger. So if a, con a consortium member is not a member of a channel, they cannot see its ledger. Now there are also MSP services which authenticates and manages identities on the network. There are wallets which are used for securely managing a user's credential. There is a certificate authority which is used for registration and revocation of identity. Now uh, there is also a state which holds all of the data of the block of the blockchain and its applications. Uh, and there is consensus algorithms which are used for deciding the valid blocks. So these are the nodes that are required for creating a fabric network. This certificate authority, which is used for registering identities and renewing or revoking certifications. And uh, there's order, which is used to uh, manage the order of, of, uh, of the transactions. There's peer, which works as an endpoint for the applications, as well as it stores the ledger and commits blocks to the ledger. Certificate, or certificate authority is completely modular you can either use the fabric's own certificate authority or your own certificate authority as well so the new version of hyperledger fabric uh, that is the version 2.0 introduced some great new features like new decentralized governance for chain codes private data enhancements as well as the ability to use external chain code launchers so earlier the chain code which is a very essential part of the blockchain network had to be deployed inside docker containers even if you are using kubernetes but now uh, you can use uh, external services and host them anywhere and use them as chain code for, for your blockchain network. So we'll, we're going to do this practically later on in this session. So what is Kubernetes? Kubernetes at its basic level is a system for running and coordinating containerized applications across a cluster of machines. So it is a platform that is designed to completely manage the life cycle of Docker containers or any containers as such and uh, it takes care of the scaling the failover of your applications and provides deployment patterns like uh, stateful st sets or um, replica sets etc so uh, you can sell fee you can scale you can group deploy your applications or your containers so kubernetes is really good for managing containerized applications for the most part uh, but if you're looking for managing complex stateful applications on top of kubernetes itself uh, you can look into the Kubernetes operators, which are great for that. Uh, they make it easy to manage these complex stateful applications by providing custom backends for uh, custom resources. And they, they are the clients of Kubernetes API and, and they, 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 they allow any level of customization to be done to the deployment process. So the operator pattern aims to capture the key work of a human operator. So a human operator has a deep knowledge of how the system should behave at certain events. Now these Kubernetes operators can be coded or designed in a similar way to get the desired result out of the out of the deployments or the applications. So a custom resource would contain all of the application configuration uh, and the controller will contain all of the business logic. So as soon as a custom resource is deployed, 
the controller will take charge and deploy all of the other required Kubernetes objects like stateful sets, config map services, etc. for that custom resource. So create these operators, I used a framework called the operator SDK that makes helping operators easier. Uh, there are a lot of tools for code generation and uh, scaffolding which which really helps bootstrapping a project really quickly and you don't have to wait, waste a lot of time writing generic controller code. So you can test the operator locally and see if it works correctly and then uh, if you have to deploy it for, for a production level system, you have to deploy it as, as a separate deployment in the same cluster. So it will keep keep watching for the for the custom resources and uh, do the task as as you intended so let's get started with the code i'll start sharing my screen so that we can we can go through the process of creating these operators as well as configure them configuring them to cre to create deployments for happy ledger fabric and yeah let's get started so first of all uh, these are the few things that we need to to run this operator uh, make sure you have both of these repositories cloned on your systems. The first one is the operator itself, whereas the second one is the fabric are the fabric specific files and scripts. Um, the other one that we need is a fabric binaries. So we'll we'll need this to do some fabric specific operations, and uh, we also need operator SDK to deploy the operator on our on our Kubernetes cluster. We you can or cannot use the Docker image to deploy the operator for, for today's demonstration purposes I'll be doing that locally so uh, I already have the uh, I already have the repositories cloned on my system so let me give you a quick look through the code of the um, of the con of the operator so there are two important folders in this uh, in this code that is uh, an API folder as well as a controller folder so the controller folder contains uh, all the controllers for example there is a CA controller there is a peer controller so a controller will be created for all the all the custom resources that we create and uh, uh, API API file will also be created for them so the controller contains all of the business logic whereas the API defines what a custom resource is so um, I'll show you uh, custom resource API. Yeah, so here you can see there are two fields uh, in our in our PS struct. One of them is a spec one, and the another one is a status. So the the spec contains all of the specifications of of our uh, of our um, of our peer. So all of this code is uh, automatically generated by the operator SDK and uh, you don't need to uh, do think a lot of, of, of about how this code has been written the most important part is that you need to you need to specify the spec specifications as well as the status so the status uh, contains contains the status of our of our deployed uh, deployed resource so let's say uh, you deploy uh, a stateful set set for your custom resource so then, uh, if you if you attach a service to it, you might need to know that uh, what its access point is. So you can store that kind of information in the status, whereas the spec would contain uh, things like uh, image name or the configuration parameters, the ports, uh, the resources, etc. So here uh, you can see the common spec has three fields. There is MSP, TLS, and Node spec. So as I told you, the node spec has all the all the uh, node specific information, whereas MSP and TLS contain uh, the certification files. So these need to be converted to the base64 format before you put them here, and uh, these will be required by P all, all the three nodes, not just PL, uh, for uh, for the purpose of uh, authentication and uh, connecting with each other in the network. After that, um, let, let me show you how the peer controller is working. So as you can see, uh, this is a reconcile method. So the first uh, function to run is the setup with manager. So the setup with manager sets up a new controller. And um, as you can see, the for, uh, so the for uh, 
parameter here is for the primary resource that this controller will watch so as you can see uh, our controller uh, will then um, run this reconcile function that will um, execute as soon as there is some some change or uh, or a custom resource gets created so yeah so as you can see so uh, as soon as uh, our um, a custom resource is created the controller will will detect it and um, it will create a secret a service for it um, as soon as a service is allocated I am checking here um, whether whether it has any ports or not and if it does I will change the status of our custom resource uh, to the to the access point uh, to the access, access point of the service then I am also creating a stateful set uh, which which will contain the main uh, peer container so this the secret would contain all of the certifications that the peer would need so as you can see I have the TLS uh, TLS um, certificates as well as the MSP certificates here mm, the service is pretty basic uh, I am attaching the secrets as a volume to the stateful set later on so as you can see I am also giving uh, a, 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 a volume to the stateful set and the container has this command which will start the peer all the environment variables will also be set and uh, the volumes that are needed by the container are also given here so this is pretty basic and um, as soon as this happens you can see that um, you'll be able to see that our peer is deployed and uh, you'll be able to interact with it so this uh, this shows that uh, you can write any kind of code and uh, and that this can be a highly customized customized code that you can you can add here to the reconcile method as well as uh, uh, you can you can configure it in other ways too so you can do pretty much anything that you want uh, with this container you can you can you can log log the details to some uh, so some server you can you can fetch things from other servers and you, you can do all kind of stuff because this is just a generic uh, golang code now now uh, once you once you make a change to to these apis you need to run make uh, two commands that is um, make manifest and make generate so these will create uh, the the custom resource files and the APIs that are required for for a controller to work so you'll be able to find the custom resource definition here in the config CRD basis folder So this is a CA custom resource, and uh, you need to you need to inst you need to install it on your Kubernetes cluster before you can, um, can before you can deploy a, a a resource with this type. So now. Um, let me quickly run the operator this is the command you need to run the operator locally you can also um, you can also run it by by using the command make deploy with the image name so in in my case this would be make deploy manage and fabric v2 kubernetes operator and it will automatically deploy the whole um, the whole operator for you as a kubernetes deployment now our operator is working and it is listening for for all for uh, the peer the orderer as well as ca uh, custom resources 
on, on our on our namespace the namespace uh, is default now I have some sample files uh, that are um, that that can be deployed to to stand up our fabric components so here they are let me show you how the peer looks like so this is the peer um, custom resource and you can see uh, this is uh, this is the certifications that this peer will have so we'll generate these using the cryptogen command for now uh, or you can also uh, take these from from the fabric ca and all you need to do is convert them into base64 and put them here uh, we also need the core peers location as well as uh, the um, binary files for the for chain core builder uh, this we'll talk about later now you can put in all the configuration parameters in the config param section and the image is hybrid fabric 2.2.1 so now if I you can s uh, I've deployed this custom resource and you can see uh, the operator says that it has successfully reconciled uh, a, a resource with um, kind peer and um, with name peer0-org1 so let's see the status by deployment and you can see mm, Here is a stateful set peer 0.org1. Oh, I yeah. So since I'm using Minikube, I need to. I need to uh, mount uh, this uh, directory as uh, as one of the directories of Minikube so that our, my peer can access these files so I'll just mount this to the home slash fa fabric location now we, we can see what what is the status uh, and the container has started and you can see our peer has um, successfully running now let's just uh, deploy other nodes too so I'll I deploy the second peer as well and the orderer now before this we need to generate some uh, some fabric specific files like uh, like the crypt the, the certifications and the genesis block um, I've already done that that's why I haven't showed it here but uh, you can use the K Kubernetes fabric network repository to do that as well so if you do create uh, create uh, certs it will create certifications for org1 and org2 as well as the orderer the, the script create genesis will create a genesis block and put it in the orderer files folder this this file uh, this folder is um, is being accessed by 
by our pod to get the genesis block file so uh, i've mounted this this directory as a volume to the pod so as you can see the order is 0 the peer 0 and peer or 20 all have um, started our orderer is giving a error of not finding a genesis block so let's just restart it because we generated it right now let's delete it and then get create uh, on the orderer so let's wait for the order to start as you can see the container is in the waiting stage now the last one uh, we need to deploy is the CA so let's quickly deploy that too and it has been successfully reconciled so here it is oh, our order is also started and yep as you can see the order is running and the system channel has also been created from the genesis block now now what we can do is create a channel so first of all create channel artifacts for a channel named my channel so it will create a channel configuration file uh, it will create two anchor peer transactions as well now Now since uh, all of our all of our channel artifacts have been created, let's uh, create a peer CLI, connect to that and create a channel. So I'm going uh, if you see there is a peer CLI.yaml file right here. So you can just create a CLI uh, deployment pod from that. So yeah here you can see a connect cli pod has been created so let's go into that and all of the files are here so let's see the create channel file yeah so let's put in the channel name as my channel export these two paths and the peers details like its configuration files and the address will be peer 0-org1 and 7051 so once all of this is done uh, let's send in the command for creating a channel so our orderer is at this host and yeah rest all is pretty okay mm, there's some error coming and this is unsupported config tag okay Let's export the channel name once more. And now you can see that the channel has been created and you have received the block zero. Now let's um, let's do other let's let's join the channel from the peers as well. So you can either copy paste the commands or you can just uh, just run the script. Let's run the script. 
and you can see that the channel has been created uh, sorry the channel has been joined now if you if you do peer channel list you can see the peer is part of my channel so now um, we can successfully say that uh, that our um, fabric uh, fabric network has stand up and we can do all all the commands that that we can do from a from a normal fabric network um, we haven't deployed the couch tv uh, for for the peers yet but they they are also pretty straightforward and i'll be doing uh, the operators from then as well in the future so I, i'll push those changes to the repository as well now another thing that i wanted to show uh, is the is the chain code as an external service feature that has been recently introduced in the fabric version 2.0 and uh, in in this feature uh, you can uh, you can uh, execute the chain code from from an external service so the chain code previously had to be deployed uh, using uh, using docker containers even if you are using kubernetes and uh, now they can be uh, deployed as an external service to any host and uh, the the peer can execute them uh, right right from there so in order to do that you have to change a few different files here and there uh, i'll show you what what all these are so first of all uh, you need to change the core.yml file and in that uh, you need to go to the external builders key and add the location of the external builder so this path uh, slash builder slash external will contain uh, this binary files these three files uh, that i've taken from the fabrics uh, sample repository for external uh, sample um, code from the external chain code uh, chain code um, folder so these are pretty basic i haven't changed uh, anything about these so all you need to do is um, mount them them to this path and uh, set a name of the external builder. Now, um, now the chain code has to be modified a little bit to make sure that it it is compatible with this new feature. So the first thing that you have to change is the metadata or JSON, and it has to be uh, set as type external. So this is the first thing. The another thing is the connection.json file has to be present so if, if you have TLS um, if you have TLS enabled then you can have the TLS uh, certificates here as well the important thing here is the address so um, so our peer will look for this address to to connect with the chain code so if you if you changes uh, if you have to connect uh, your your um, peer to this uh, chain code you have to set a set a host name here uh, so uh, let's do that um, let's deploy one chain code uh, for the organization first on port 899 um, that is that um, now what we need to do is um, go to the chain code external folder in in the Kubernetes fabric network repository and uh, we need to package this uh, chain code as as a chain code package which will then be installed on the peer now cfz as a transfer uh, the 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 code itself does not need to be present because it is running as an external service uh, all we need the, is the metadata.json file as well as, as well as the connection.json file once our chain code has been um, oops I, cl I closed that terminal so once our chain code has been uh, packaged we can install it to our peer so let's go to the peer CLI and then to the chain code folder let's first get peer one's configuration 
parameters now let's go to the chain code external folder and install install this code install so you can see the chain code has been installed uh, and you, we get a basic uh, identifier for this chain code now let's do the same thing for the organization 2 uh, let's again package it I'll have to go to the folder again now <coughs> uh, this time we are setting up to a different host name so we need to package it again uh, code da da da. yeah so this has been packaged now let's uh, switch the peer to peer the second organization and install the change code again Okay, okay. We need to export the variables from the outside folder and then install it. Yeah. So you can see this has also been installed. Now the chain code has been installed to the peer. Now we, all we need to do is uh, is deploy it as an external service and then we can invoke it. So if you go to the samples folder again on our <coughs> on a fabric v2 operator you'll see there are two files asset transfer basic org1 and org2 uh, all you need to do is change the core chain code um, chain code id here to the one that you got after you installed your chain code so this is for the peer one i guess if i'm correct yeah let's change it to the peer one let me quickly show you the chain code too uh, so the chain code is where is it yeah the chain code is uh, pretty basic it's almost the same except this uh, this last main function where it gets us the server configuration uh, which is uh, the server uh, address and the chain code id it uh, has to listen to so so the chain code server address uh, is itself whereas um, the chain code id is the one we provided from here uh, i have um, let me quickly check if i have installed it correctly 395 395 okay now now change it for Let's change it for the for the second organization too. Yep. So this is it. So this this um, chain code ID will be uh, supplied to this uh, uh, to the chain code itself from the en environment files, and it will then be able to listen uh, listen to any requests that come from the peer and execute them. Now these are installed and uh, let's let's um, start up our chain code let's go to the fabric sample crds folder um, yeah organization one and organization two so one thing to note here is that the image is of the chain code itself so this chain code has a docker file uh, from which um, you need to create an image and then you need to like either push it or build it so um, that's that's from where I got these images and um, let's see if these are deployed yep these are deployed here so if we describe them you see these are perfectly running and um, rest all looks good chain code id and the chain code server is also been provided so that's that 
now let's approve the chain code from both the organizations and uh, let's see and uh, what happens let's do it from the peer one first Uh, one thing you need to do is change the package ID here. Um, let's take it from the asset transfer basic org one YAML file. Uh, let's copy it. Oh, the core config file. Okay. We need to go to the previous folder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and okay yeah so now I think it should approve it yeah transaction has been committed with the status valid this has been done now do it for the second organization too uh, let's change the package ID as well This is the chain code that has been installed here. Export PKG ID to this one and uh, let's approve it. And the transaction has been committed. Now let's finally commit the transaction and uh, install the chain code on this channel. And this is also done so it is done from both uh, org 0 and org 1 as you can see now uh, we can invoke this chain code and see what happens now again let's switch to the organization 1 and uh, let's initialize the ledger so you can see the chain code invoke has, uh, has been successful and the result is 200 now do this for the second organization and um, yep we have got all, all the results back now if we go back again and see it from from the first okay yeah wrong command see it's from the first organization we can see that uh, yeah the chain code has been um, is working perfectly fine uh, the both of the peers are able to get the same records and the chain code is uh, working as an external service out of the out of the Kubernetes cluster not not the cl cluster but the out of the f um, out of the docker container that is to usually used to be so yeah that's um, that's pretty much it if you if you need to change any of these configuration files all you need to do is um, go to the fabric v2 operator and uh, change the apis and if you need to change the all uh, the, the logic the controller logic then you can change the controller as well uh, the repositories are open source so you can change the code um, as per your will and um, you can the sample crd files are also here so you can change these as well and use them in your deployments. Uh, the CouchDB's deployment is still not done and I'll be doing it um, in, in the coming days and I'll, I'll push that to the repository as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's that. Uh, thank you all for staying here and um, staying to the, throughout the session. I hope you learned something today and if, if you have any questions or any feedback, please fill this form or you can also reach out to me on the Twitter and uh, Telegram. So yeah, have a great day. Thank you.